who will be our Israel hero in round number three of Chess Olympiad 2024. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Nitzan Steinberg. I'm your grandmaster from Israel in this YouTube channel. So today, friends, we will watch a clash between Israel and Mongolia in round number three of Chess Olympiad 2024. Israel's start hasn't been the best so far, but I really hope they manage to bounce back and improve in the upcoming rounds. We won against Ethiopia in the first round, drew with Ireland in the second round, so let's see together how it ends against Mongolia. We will start with today's star, my good friend, Grandmaster Tamir Nabati. So he played against Fidemaster with the name of Sumia Chingan uh, from Mongolia. Let's see how it goes. So d4, knight f6, c4, e6 knight f3 d5 and now knight to c3 as you can see c6 this is the semi slav defense e3 knight bd7 i really must admit i really um, enjoy to play this defense with the black pieces but now we are all wants to why to win tamir nabati let's go come on queen c2 the best move here you know the most common move here also bishop d3 of course but after bishop d3 d takes c4 bishop takes b5 bishop d3 bishop d6 a lot of variations so much theory so much books uh, already you know written here so yeah it's it's beautiful uh, and really interesting interesting opening for both colors but after knight bd7 queen c2 was played by tamir a little bit more flexible maybe you will play the move bishop d3 maybe bishop e2 e2 of course maybe b3 bishop b2 in the next moves so queen c2 is a very good uh, uh, you know developing moves and you're just wait to see what black will play bishop d6 and now bishop d3 was played castle and castle d takes c4 bishop takes b5 bishop d3 and bishop d7 I can tell you that this position occurred in my um, game so many times in my life with the black pieces. I really like to play uh, this position, but let's see how Tamir is playing here with white pieces. E4 immediately, E5 of course, because E5, this is the threat with white, um, E5, bishop to G5. And in this position, the best move that I remember is to play the move E takes D4 knight takes d4 and now the move uh, bishop h2 there is such tactic king takes knight g4 with queen g5 but after bishop g5 e takes d4 there is interesting move e5 here the point here that after d takes c3 we are just playing the move bishop h7 check king h8 and now e takes f6 with after knight takes f6 rook a d1 with really good initiative here as you can see you know the black king feels not so good and this position looks terrible for him queen f5 maybe queen h3 rook f1 really good initiative for white and um, so after bishop g5 yeah it takes d4 e5 maybe knight takes e5 is the best but here bishop takes h7 of course knight takes h7 is a bad move because of bishop takes d8 but maybe here it's interesting bishop d8 knight f3 g takes and rook takes a d8 i don't know Two bishops for a queen, but it's really nice, right? I don't know. For example, knight takes d6 is bad after rook takes with rook g6 check with bishop f3 checkmate. Yeah, it's not so easy here um, to play. Maybe this position already better for black. But yeah, after knight takes d4, yeah, I, yeah sorry, e5, of course, knight takes, maybe knight takes e5 uh, instead of bishop takes h7 immediately. Bishop takes an f4 with knight e4. I don't know, d takes, f takes, queen d4 check, king h1, rook d 8 maybe, yeah. A lot of variations to calculate, but I, I really assume that Tamir uh, has something in his pocket after e takes d4, but his opponent played the move rook to e8. d takes e5, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, makes sense until now, because after rook takes here, probably just f4 right f4 with a5 so bishop takes was played f4 and now bishop d4 was a big mistake the best move here is to play queen b6 check 
King h1, bishop takes c3. Now after queen takes c3, just knight takes e4 and this position is just uh, probably almost winning for black. Um, but after bishop takes c3, I will take with the pawn. c5 now, just opening this diagonal for the bishop and also discovering this queen to protect the f6 uh, knight. Bishop takes f6. And now we are not playing the move queen f6 because of e5 with double threat here and also the b5 square. We are playing the move c4, the best move here, because black understand that this bishop on d3 is a really strong piece. And when we're playing the move c4, now we are attacking this bishop on d3, also wants to open this diagonal for the bishop on b7, and also don't forget the bishop on f6 is under attack. So bishop d4, for example, c takes d3, I don't know, queen takes, bishop takes e4, queen g3, just queen g6, looks really drawish so maybe this was the best for black but after f4 the filmmaster from mongolia played the move bishop d4 and now king h1 and e5 is coming ladies and gentlemen and it looks really good for white h6 bishop h4 going back with e5 threats also bishop f6 looks really promising after queen takes e5 queen e7 and knight e4 I don't know, it looks really scary for a black knight g3, knight f5, attack, really attack, rook a, e1, f5, f6 in some ideas. So let's see, bishop h4 was played by Tamir, I know him, he wants to play with two bishops and it's really strong here. Queen b6, e5, knight g4 and queen e2, very strong, attacking the, the knight, also queen e4, some threats here on h7. Knight e3 was played, rook f3 and king h8. Uh, maybe, yeah, it's not so easy to play such a move with the black, but bishop c8 to understand that he must bring him to the game with bishop g4, maybe bishop f5 in some ideas. Because of c5 here is bad because rook takes e3, c4 probably, uh, I don't know, bishop e4, just bishop takes e3, bishop b7, queen takes queen e3, yeah, white is just winning. So bishop c8 was the best here, but he played the move king h8 and now rook g3. Attack is just amazing. Rook takes g7 with bishop f6, queen h5. Yeah, the king on h8 will be very weak. c5, queen h5 was played. And now rook g7, bishop f6. So many threats here for Tamir Nabati. Just unbelievable. After, you know, don't, re don't forget that he lost the last game against Ireland. And now he's coming back with full motivation, full control of the board, just crashing is Mongolian uh, player, knight g2, rook takes, bishop takes, king takes, and this position just lost, king g8, knight e5 is coming back, and now bishop e4, just amazing, Tamir Nabati in his best, rook a c8, knight f6, a brilliant sacrifice, g takes, if g takes f6, of course, we are just playing the move, bishop takes with queen h6, and yeah, so much checkmates, right? So, he didn't play it, he played the move, king f8, knight takes c8, and queen f5, g5, Bishop f2 going back and you know this position just really lost uh, as you can see this position and black resigned the game Tamir Nabati achieved a very important game with white pieces in the Slav defense you know congratulations Tamir come back come back you can do it you our hero you are star come on let's do it together so let's move forward to the next uh, games here we will do it very fast because you know our most important game was tamir nabati game so let's come back and see the next player maxim roshan with the black pieces let's go forward very fast and we'll have some uh, interesting things to see here we have here the grunfeld defense as you can see uh, i'm not familiar very good with this defense but it seems like it was very, you know, not so sharp game because very, I don't know how to say, maybe solid, uh, quiet game, right? C6, B takes, Rook A6, C5, you know, um, not so many things uh, to see and say about this. C5 pawn is under attack, Queen D3 takes, E6, some, you know, very drawish position and Maxim Rochten is going for this draw. He didn't like the position because the bishop on g7 is not working at all and the white pieces are more active. Let's go for the thir third game 
we have Ilya Smirin with the black pieces after he managed to win the last game against Ireland very important win but now let's see what happened so knight f3 knight f6 c4 g6 going for b4 variation and here d6 e5 a5 of course b5 and now e5 and knight bd7 d3 knight c5 knight c3 and e4 is going for it and i'm not sure that Ilya saw what uh, the feeder master from Mongolia saw in this variation knight takes f knight knight from f of course takes e4 bishop takes g7 knight f2 rook takes king takes and now queen d2 and in this position it's not so easy to play with the black pieces because rook a f1 e4 you know this pawn on f7 will be weak and also the a5 will be weak the bishop here is strong i'm not sure where this bishop from c8 will come so let's see f5 was played rook a f1 bishop d7 e4 is going for it and it's really interesting move because after f takes e4 we have just amazing move knight g5 attacking here with this f file rook f7 queen c3 so many threats here the black uh, just resigning very very uh, fast queen f6 was played e5 amazing move by uh, the freedom master from mongolia d takes and now knight takes a brilliant sacrifice after queen takes d4 attacking the queen and the knight and after queen f6 for example after queen d6 also d takes c5 queen takes rook takes and this position is very bad the bishop is under attack the pawn on b7 is under attack and it seems like should be winning for white he played the move queen f6 d takes c5 rook fd8 queen f4 you know attacking the pawn on c7 uh, c6 queen c7 yeah this is not easy to handle with the black pieces king h6 and now rook f4 was played also just queen takes b7 looks really good i don't know rook a b8 queen c7 just going back the a5 pawn is under attack for example c takes b5 just c6 this position just should be losing rook f4 was played g4 coming back and now uh, g5 sorry and now the king on h6 very weak as you can see queen d4 queen takes b7 rook a b8 queen c7 yes yeah, slowly improving everything taking the pawns queen e1 also the bishop here is under attack uh, after bishop c4 here i think c7 yeah this this is the way to play here also the rook on a8 also the rook on d8 is under attack the king on h6 so open yeah very terrible position unfortunately um so after rook e8 c takes b5 and this position just losing absolutely and yeah yeah what can i say Ilyas mirin unfortunately lost this game against the freedom master from mongolia these two pawns are getting for a queen yeah so this position handled by a win by mongolia so until now the position is one and a half against one and a half let's see the last game of this round we have evgeny posny with white pieces let's see what is going on here so the semi slav the slav defense and d takes c4 was played this is not the semi slav this is the slav variation and now a4 bishop f5 i must tell you that i read a book so much years ago uh, from the grandmaster boris avro about this um line you can just learn from it it's it's really good i don't earn anything from saying this this one so you just have uh, the confident you, you can really just uh, i don't know buy it and uh, learn it it's it's beautiful i think i have it maybe here uh where is this yeah i think i have it yeah this is the book this is the book yeah <laughs> somewhere i have it yeah boris Avruch, the classical slav you can see it yeah so i don't know it's it's really good i learned from this book so much so bishop f5 knight h4 now e6 was played knight takes e takes e3 just wants to develop the bishop and take the pawn on c4 white has two bishops but of course this bishop on c1 is not so good uh, until now castle queen f3 queen d7 and now h3 was played by uh, evgeny i think the point that after castle maybe he thought about i don't know rook e8 i'm not sure about h3 but you know h3 maybe was to idea to play something g4 knight e6 looking really good move because knight b4 was the uh, the plan to come to d5 the b4 square so good square for the knight's black uh black's knight of course bishop d3 attacking the pawn on f5 g6 and now bishop takes a6 i'm not sure why he didn't play the move g4 now and attack the pawn on f5 because now knight b4 bishop b1 going back 
and it looks really interesting c5 maybe because this king on e1 is very feels not safe right in the middle of the board without a long castle and without short castle it's not so easy to to have the king on e1 but as you can see bishop a6 was played by evgeny b takes and now g4 and now c5 and i can tell you that in real time i saw this position i was very afraid for evgeny because the king in on e1 is very weak rook f8 rook a d white a d8 of course is opening all the the files and the king on e1 is not feeling good but let's see g takes f5 e takes c takes d4 e takes d4 bishop b4 and now castle queen d4 rook bishop g5 was played just developing a bishop and also controlling these uh, two rooks rook a d1 rook f1 now it looks better takes takes queen e4 king g2 takes takes knight d7 and now you know this position leads to a draw after so many uh, exchange pawns as you can see yeah they're playing some moves here and in this position just draw agreed and if Gany Posny drew the last round uh, yeah the last board against Mongolia so the final result 2 2 against Mongolia another draw I really hope the Israeli team will come back in the round number four against Albania see you soon and don't forget to smash that like button subscribe my channel for more chess content see you soon in round number four let's pray for the Israeli team bye bye